Are you going to apologize, Nick? Are you going to have them on your podcast? That's a hell of Don't a point. you understand how they feel <laughs> on the inside? That is a hell of a point. It is. The slippery slope is not in a fallacy. It is reality. We are living the slippery slope. Mm. So somebody's going to have to produce the wall. So there's going to be a lot of voices that need to be objective and tell people the truth. I'm very happy to be those voices. If you're looking for me to, you know, make you feel good, I can't be your mommy. Despite getting into fights with pretty much every single conservative out there, I still like Candace Owens. She's willing to sit down and get into it with pretty much anybody, and she's a great voice for conservatism and conservative values. So we're going to see today, of course, is her changing Nick Cannon's mind on his show, Council Culture, interesting title, <laughs> in real time. So, of course, before we get to these clips, please like and comment on this video so we can break through the algorithms. Here we go. Okay, and so I was like, yes, let's have a conversation. Of course, respectfully. If you say to me you need, you should respect people, I always respect people. I would disrespect you if I lied to you. I'm not going to call a man that, a woman. I'm not going to call a woman a man. I'm not going to say sorry for saying all telling the your truth. your beliefs. It's not my belief. A woman a woman cannot be a man. A man cannot be a woman. That's not Again, a belief. But I'm saying in your perception of the world is different from someone else's perspective. Because just as emphatic as you are, that so that you believe what you just said. There's someone that believes emphatically the opposite. Okay, so what you're talking about is the idea that everything can be subjective and there's no such thing as truth. And let me tell you why oh, that. Let me, let me let me. But that's why it's either yes or a no. <laughs> no, because because so we we're either talking about feelings or facts. No, but that's what I'm saying. There is a. I believe there is objective truth. Okay. Okay. A person that is born a man. Okay. A person that is born with a penis, as we call it. Okay. Cannot ever grow up and give birth. Do we agree with that? Yes. Okay, so there is such thing as an objective truth. I will not apologize for sharing objective truth. I'm not going to apologize for not saying because his feelings are her and do you well, see why? how I feel because I, I- Because so you you have no problem going throughout the world hurting people's feelings. I have no problem going out the world. That's one way to pitch it, telling people the truth so that they can better their lives. So they can live in reality. And not the one. But not, what not if, the they, but what if someone believes lives. that that is a better life for them? Okay, well, let's play your way then. Let's 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 do it the other way. There are a group of people who are now referring to themselves as minor attracted people. Oh, God, you can't go there. Well, hey, hey, <laughs> but that's what they believe. They believe that they are in love and want to and want people. to have with children. They believe that, Nick. They believe it. And can't are you going to apologize when you call them? Are you going to apologize, Nick? Are you going to have them on your podcast? A hell of Don't a you point. understand how they feel <laughs> on the inside when you say that they can't have sex with eight year olds? That is a hell of a point. It is the slippery slope is not in a fallacy, it is reality. We are living the slippery slope. Mm. So somebody's going to have to produce the wall. So there's going to be a lot of voices that need to be objective and tell people the truth. I'm very happy to be those voices. If you're looking for me to, you know, make you feel good, I can't be your mommy. I can't. That's why you tell me, I can't be your mommy. But see, that's what I was like. It's okay, I'm not it's... your mommy. You're not a toddler. You're an adult. But see, this I... is what truth is. And if you can't deal with truth, then you're going to have a very tough life, way tougher than having to listen to Candace Owens say, you are a man on the internet. So this is actually a very interesting concept that Candace Owens brings up here, right? It's actually disrespectful when you're conversing with someone to approach it with a lie, right? It's disrespectful to lie to you. So to sit down and say that I believe something I really don't when I'm trying to make my point really makes no sense. And honestly, if we can't approach something from like objective truth, objective reality, then there can be no understanding. There can be no middle ground. There can be no agreement, no discussion, because everything you're saying is based off of something that is provably false. So if you don't accept the reality that men are men and women are women, then there's nothing we can agree on further beyond that point. All right. But if you want to say that I want to go ahead and get hormone treatments or hormone blockers and assignment surgeries and wear dresses and do all this stuff, we can say, okay, as an adult in this free nation, you can do that as long as you're not breaking any laws. And as long as you're not trying to harm anyone, right? But if you approach it from the simple fact that you have to believe what I'm saying, even though what I'm saying is patently false, provably false, down to the chromosome false, then basically we can have no agreement, no understanding. And I love how Nick Cannon comes out and says, so wait, your objective here is just to kind of 
hurt people, right? You're going to go around hurting people's feelings. No, we're going to stand up for what is actually true because lying about this doesn't help anyone. And I love how Candace actually turns this around and says, oh, what about all the minor attracted people out there, right? Do you have to accept their truth, their reality? Because honestly, they're making the exact same arguments that all of the trans advocates are making. And Nick Cannon's like, Holy crap, that's a really good point. <laughs> that is a really good point. Dang it, you got me. So I love how Candace Owens brought up that dinger. So, but again, in your ultimate, in your ultimate goal, or the, what? What is your ultimate goal? My child, for my children to grow up in a world that is still dictated by reality and not feelings, because that's the thing we are passing this world off. So, you you have to appreciate that we're now the adults. We're the adults in the room, right? right? And right now we have a bunch of adults who are too scared to even say the truth. So forget the generations who had to have find within themselves the strength to go to a foreign country and potentially die fighting for freedom. We're now a generation where it's so easy for us to preserve freedom. It's so easy for us to preserve righteousness. We just have to be willing to be called mean names on the internet and have mean articles written about me. People say to me, oh, Candace, how do you deal with all this hate? I don't care. Literally, I don't care. It's like I, I really hope people listening to this understand before you even write that comment how little of a shit I give about it <laughs> like I want you to know that when you're writing it I get whatever about her I just don't care and it shocks people because I you know why I live my life with real truth right I have a husband who loves me I have three healthy children I am close with my sisters my cousins here she does my makeup like the Bible kind of gets it right. If you start start living by the Bible, you will have this same confidence. You will find the audacity. You will realize this is not it. So you might as well contribute, contribute mm. truth because you're going to meet your maker. You are going to meet your creator one day. And your creator is not, you know, whatever organization, the SBL, I think I'm on the SBLC's list, the ADL list. I just don't care. Right? I, I, they shouldn't put together these lists. They shouldn't waste their time putting me on their list because I literally don't give a shit. You know, mm. and so that is and that's why they hate me the most, because they know I don't fear them. I fear telling a lie. That's what I fear. That's my fear in life. Wow. So but and, and people's feelings don't matter to you whatsoever. They're just not their mommies. So Nick Cannon apparently just can't get over the fact that you're gonna hurt some people's feelings. We all don't agree on every single aspect, especially when it comes to something that is not necessarily true. But Candace Owens doubling down saying, what matters most to her? Her kids growing up in a world where truth reigns supreme, not some weird ideology that is based on your own narcissistic warped mindset. Okay, that is what's the most important thing. Because yes, we are handing this world off. We are trying to hopefully make it better in the future for our kids. And that's the whole point. But Nick Cannon, all that matters is hurt feelings. And of course, nobody wants to hurt anybody's feelings, but you're doing more damage to someone who may actually have some problems by ignoring those problems and buying in to those problems, as opposed to trying to offer them a solution to those problems. <laughs> so you can care all you want about the feels, but what's most important, of course, is the objective reality. And recently, something very similar to this was mentioned by Neil deGrasse Tyson over on Pierce Morgan. And there is clearly, clearly, a growing unfairness and inequality from the issue of people who are born biologically male identifying as women and being allowed to compete against biological females and then beginning increasingly to be quite dominant. Okay, so if there's a wave of trans women who dominate the sport against other women, all those sports will become less interesting based on how we all watch sports. Even the Super Bowl here in the United States, if it's a blowout by mid by, by halftime, nobody watches the second half. Right. We watch it for the equality of the contest. Okay, so... Sounds like uh, you agree with me, What I'm saying then. is, like you said... Wait, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Uh, so, what I see is, sports is on the frontier of how to handle this frontier of, 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 of tra people who are trans. Mm -hmm. It's on the frontier of how to resolve that. And I, I'm making this up now. Imagine the future of sports does not distinguish sex. It distinguishes and sorts people by hormone ratios. I'm, I'm making this up, but imagine that if that were the case. 
That would be interesting. You get a hormone test, if you're in this range, and then you compete against other people with the same range so of hormones. That's ridiculous. They're not woman, allowing for the I superior male biology when it comes to lung capacity, stamina, to body mass, to muscle mass, all those things. You're, if you just take one criteria of hormones, you're not allowing all that. I also feel that if you want to have a separate category, have a trans category. Or have trans women compete against men, which is their biology. Isn't that the scientific way to resolve this? I don't have a solution. What I started this section of the conversation by saying that how you handle trans athletes is a frontier in sports that does not yet have a full solution. And so, and I made up an example, like maybe you could divide people by hormones. I don't know if that would work no. physiologically, but at the end of the day, we watch sporting events because they are competitively interesting. And so something's gonna have to get resolved there, and I don't have that solution. So Neil deGrasse Tyson, who, by the way, is an intelligent man in his own field, is saying, I'm just gonna go ahead and randomly make up this idea about how we can have trans people included into sports. And we're gonna base it off of hormone levels. The only problem is he's been making this argument for over a year, right? He has used this sample several times on several different shows, talking about separating people by hormones. And that, of course, is the fair way to treat trans people when they're competing in sports. However, there is one problem with this entire argument. Show me a a trans man and for all of us out there who are normal people that is a girl pretending to be a boy show me a trans man who is competing competitively in any sport right please show that to me it does not exist it's not happening this only goes one way which of course negates his entire hormone arguments okay when this is only happening in one direction you have to start to kind of think hmm maybe there is some inequality going on because we're ignoring objective truth objective reality and of course pierce morgan brings up a really good point we should just have a separate trans category for people who don't want to compete against their biological sex but instead want to prove their mettle against other people who are on maybe some type of hormone level like neil degrasse tyson is talking about so, of course, the whole point is this. If we're going to have an honest discussion and try to come to a consensus and understanding, that must be based on reality. It must be based on facts, not on perception or thought models like Neil deGrasse Tyson is doing. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and stay safe out there, people, because they're coming after you.